If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and take a moment to try the question on your own before listening on. We'll begin by drawing a picture that captures the information being described. Now we know at 2 o'clock p.m. one boat is some distance away from the dock. We're not sure yet what that is. And then the other boat is located at the dock. It turns out that we will call 2 o'clock p.m. time zero, which will be a useful thing to do, as we'll see. Now at 3 o'clock p.m., which is, of course, one hour later, we can see the boats have moved. The boat that originally was to the west of the dock has now moved all the way to the dock, and then the other boat has moved south away from the dock. And so that would be at time equals 1. Now we recall from perhaps a physics course or even another math course that the distance that an object travels is equal to its speed multiplied by its time. So if the black boat is moving at a speed of 15 kilometers per hour, that means that in that one hour that it traveled from 2 o'clock to 3 o'clock p.m., it has traveled a distance of 15 kilometers. So we know that from here out to the dock is 15 kilometers, and that will become an important result momentarily. Now, it turns out that sometime between 2 o'clock and 3 o'clock p.m., the boats are at a minimum distance from each other. We don't know that time yet. In fact, that's what we're trying to find. Now, given that the red-colored boat was moving at 20 kilometers per hour, we can see, if we plug in 20 for a speed and just t for time, that the distance it has traveled in this unknown time would be 20t. Similarly, the black boat, which remember started out here, has traveled a distance of 15t. Now it'll be useful actually to come up with the distance from here to the dock, and hopefully from the diagram we can see that that's going to be the 15 kilometers that it overall travels minus the 15t that it has traveled thus far. And what we've done is we've developed a right triangle with two sides labeled. And our goal is to minimize the distance between the boats. Maybe we could call that distance C. Now, of course, because it is a right triangle, the Pythagorean theorem would be obeyed. So we know that C squared would be equal to one of the sides of the triangle squared plus the other side of the triangle squared. Now, we technically don't want to minimize C squared. And some students might be tempted to solve this for C by square rooting both sides. The problem with that is that when it comes time to taking the derivative, it'll be a little bit messier to kind of calculate the derivative of the right side of the equation when it's in this form. So it's actually easier, it's a bit of a shortcut, to leave the equation in terms of c squared and just try to find the minimum value of c squared as opposed to c. It's a shortcut, but it turns out to work, and it'll make our calculations a little bit easier. So we're going to go ahead and take the derivative now. The left side would just become c squared prime just simple derivative notation. Right side, we're going to have to use a chain rule. So we'll pull the two down, we'll recopy the inside of the parentheses, we'll subtract one from the exponent to make this to the first power, and then we have to multiply by the derivative of the inside, which is negative 15. Same idea with this term, we'll pull the two down, recopy the inside, subtract one from the exponent, and then multiply by the derivative of 20t, which is 20. We could then simplify this to give us negative 450 plus 1,250t. If you have any questions about how that's simplified, please let me know in the comments. After finding the derivative, what we do in optimization problems is we set the derivative equal to zero and we solve for our variable. And when we do that, we get time is equal to 9 25ths of an hour. Now this is a critical number. We don't yet know for sure that it has minimized the c squared. And so to confirm that it is indeed minimizing the c squared function, we need to do the second derivative test. So the second derivative would become c squared double prime, and then the second derivative would end up equaling 1250. Now we'll notice that that's positive, of course. And anytime we have a function with a positive second derivative, that means that it's concave up. So our critical number would be located on a concave up function, which indeed confirms that we have found a minimum of our function. So when time is equal to 9 25 of an hour, we indeed have the minimum distance between the boats. Now, 9 25 of an hour, if we multiply that by 60, yields a value in terms of minutes of 21.6. Now, remember that time zero was at 2 o'clock p.m. So we can say that 21.6 minutes after 2 p.m., the boats will be at a minimum distance apart.